Hello, we're going to do a review and unboxing of the Paramount Eiffel Tower 1892 reproduction. This is a reproduction of the what is variously called a skeletal telephone or the Eiffel Tower telephone. It was first introduced in 1892 and a number of different versions came out around the turn of the 20th century. You see, it comes with a instruction booklet. I don't really haven't still haven't read it yet. I mean, it's just a telephone. It actually seems quite substantial. I'm sort of surprised because some of the reviews I had read before ordering it had some oh, not so complimentary words about its bill, but I find it, it quite acceptable. Here's the headset. I wasn't really expecting too much from this part because a lot of people complained about its very plasticky feel, but actually I'm pleasantly surprised. I find it quite okay. This is cute. It doesn't really do anything though. I think that some words are in order concerning the buttons here. Some people have been unhappy about the buttons and they wanted a real rotary dial. But we really have to remember that the original versions of this phone had no dial, they had no buttons, they had nothing. There was no direct dialing in those days. In those days, you would crank the handle, which would turn a generator. This would send a voltage down to the office and alert a switchboard operator that you were wanting to connect. Then you would be manually connected to whichever party you wanted to talk to. But nowadays, there's no infrastructure for this sort of thing, so we have to have some sort of direct dialing mechanism. So whether it would be a button system or a dial system, either one would be equally an anachronistic. The headset is interesting. It has some cloth-covered coiled wire. I remember as a child running across cloth-covered wire while rummaging around in the attic. So this is a very nice retro feel. However, uh, we must remember that actually in the original versions, coiled wires didn't exist. They used a kind of a braided uh, cloth covered wire. The overall form is very, very interesting. Uh, this is reflected in the fact that it's oftentimes referred to as a skeletal phone. During the late uh, Victorian era and right into the 20th century, there was a movement in industrial design which emphasized a sort of a stark skeletal aspect of things. If we look at the Eiffel Tower, the Eiffel Tower represents the skeleton of a structure which has no skin. If we look at things such as the Crystal Palace, the skeleton of the building is brought to the fore. Well, we find the same aspect of, uh, of industrial design manifest in this phone. It's a, basically the skeleton of a telephone. If you look even at the, 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 the legs and chassis, these are actually integral parts of the inductors inside of it. Let us see what the ringtone is like. Hello, one, two, three. It would be nice if it had a more retro ringtone, but I can live with this. Alright, so let's see how the phone fits in with the decor of my uh, control room. You're here in the rack, and is this the phone? I've got other retro stuff, nice Wimsurst machine, some very retro pictures. King Edward VII, this is my retro clock, Victrola, 
various processing bits and bobs. That's my nice little retro mic for talkback. Some nice magic eye tubes. And how about these for retro speakers? Cool? Yes, well, everything fits in with the motif of my control room quite nicely. And I can recommend this quite, quite nicely. Very good. Thank you.